Floor, please. Oh, what a shot. Oh, yes. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Four Please Now Driving, the official Masters podcast. I'm your host, Marty Smith from ESPN. Friday at the Masters was blustery yet again, windier even than Thursday. Gusts so pronounced, the cut line shifted to six over par, and playing conditions were very difficult for the players. I, I was as about as happy as you could be to be off of a golf course. That was so hard, and we got the uh, the sand shower to end our day. So it was kind of uh, kind of even the golf course was saying, "Get get the hell out of here." And even here, even at a place as amazing as this, you you still. I was picturing my couch and a TV, and uh, yeah, just wanted to be done. Just be inside. That's all we were rooting for. The six over par cut line is as high as it's been in the past 15 years. We haven't seen it this high since 2017. Despite his desire to be cuddled up on the couch, Homa is in contention to win the 88th Masters. Friday, he shot a 1-under 71 to move to the weekend tied at 6-under par with co-leaders Bryson DeChambeau and Scotty Scheffler. Homa found himself comfortable despite the raucous crowds that always follow one of his playing partners, Tiger Woods. At one point, I think we were leading, and I imagine I would have felt more pressure in a way had I not been playing with Tiger. So I actually think that was a that was a good thing. The crowd doesn't know you're there, which is pretty awesome. DeChambeau followed his career best 7 under 65 Thursday with a 73 Friday, allowing him to maintain his position atop the leaderboard with Homa and world number one Scotty Scheffler, against whom He's thrilled to match Wits Saturday. Yeah, extremely, extremely. Um, it's uh, different, obviously, not being able to play in most of the same events and seeing how successful he's been out there. He's obviously the best player in the world, and it's going to be a lot of fun competing and seeing what, what he can do uh, compared to what the rest of the field can do, what I can do. Um, I'm looking forward to it. I really am. DeChambeau and Homa will tee off at 245 Eastern in the final pairing. Scheffler, our 2022 Masters champion, continues to excel even in less than favorable conditions. He'll join Nikolai Hoygaard, who stands two shots behind the leaders, on the tee at 235. Five-time Masters champion Tiger Woods made the Masters tournament cut for the 24th consecutive time. That is a new record. Wood's two-round cumulative score of one over par is good for T22 on the overall leaderboard. It means I have a chance going in the weekend. Uh, I'm, I'm here. I get a chance to, to win the golf tournament. I'm right there. I'm only, what, eight back as of right now. Um, I don't think anyone's going to run off and hide right now, but it's really bunched. The way the, the ball is moving on the greens, uh, chip shots are being blown. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's, it's all you want in a golf course today. By the way, there are at least 10 players in the 89-player field who weren't even born yet when that streak began. Tiger tees off at 1245, playing with Terrell Hatton, one future Pro Football Hall of Famer who marvels at Tiger's resilience and longevity, especially in the face of multiple debilitating injuries, is Larry Fitzgerald. Larry Fitzgerald, one of the greatest to ever do it in the game of football, and now my colleague at ESPN. It is so great to see you, brother. Great to see you as well. I have never seen the par three course from this side, and it's one of the most beautiful pieces of scenery here at Augusta National. How do you describe the sensory experience of being here? I call it adult Disneyland. You know, you come <laughs> here, there's not a blade of grass out of place, um, birds chirping. All the patrons orderly, you know, moving around and everybody's having a great time. It's just uh, it's one of the best sporting events in the world. And to be here on these grounds is like nothing else. I feel like each year I come here, I add another beautiful memory to the chap to, to the book of, of my experience here. 
of all of yours, what's your most cherished moment or memory here? Well, my first year coming out was uh, a few years ago. I was able to watch Tiger Woods win, win his fifth Masters. It was like like unbelievable the, the first year coming to be able to see that. And, uh, you know, so I've been back ever since. And it's one of those experiences that, like, it's, it's always marked on the calendar. I like to do stuff. I just like to go to the range and watch the guys swing and how they prepare and how they mentally approach, you know, getting ready to go out there and play. So I, I'm into, like, the geeky stuff a little bit. I know you love to play the game, too, and I know you're really good at it. So when you are analyzing what they're doing on the range, what, what are you taking away from it? Well, I like to see the drills, how they set up the, the, the sticks, um, the, the alignment sticks, and kind of like what they do in terms of the process of the shots they're trying to sh shape, you know, hitting cuts and draws and hitting it through windows. And like, I'm trying to, you know, everybody's trying to improve their game all the time. And, you know, you, you want to take the money of your friends and there's no better place to come out and watch the best players in the world kind of go through their warm up and routine and you try to implement it into your game and hopefully you can hit it good enough to win your bets. I think for most of us mere mortal golfers, playing here at Augusta is the ultimate dream. What's your experience? Uh, it's nothing better. Um, I was very fortunate you know, to be able to experience this place and um, be able to walk the grounds and roll some of the putts that you've seen on TV and you know, try hitting shots that Bubba Watson and Scotty Scheffler and Tiger Woods have, have tried. You know, it's, it's nothing better, man. You, you leave here uh, a, a very appreciative person. How did you do at Amen Corner? Um, I think I was one over. Ele I mean, Eleven is a beast. You know, you, you, I hit it over in the trees on the right, and then I struggled around. But you know, it, you know, it, it, it makes the experience great. And you know, you get to go back and tell all your friends, you know, what you did on which hole, and they're asking you. It's always great, uh, you know, talk over dinner. I have this. I wrote a piece once for ESPN.com called "Athletes Die Twice." Mm -hmm. And my thought process there was when you are elite at what you do and it's been your identity your entire life and then you retire and or the game is taken away from you, there's a substantial void oh, sure. that needs to be filled. I wonder how golf may have helped fill that void for you since you retired. Well, it's been a big, big, big feel for me. You know, you lose your sense of locker room, you lose your sense of purpose, and then when you're able to go out on the golf course, you have friends. And I always say golf is like the best four-hour interview you can ever have. You know, after playing golf with somebody, you know exactly what you need to know about him or her. If they're honest, you know how they deal with success, how they deal with defeat. Do they blame their caddy for the misses and mistakes? You know, you see a lot of uh, a person's character is revealed on the golf course, and you know. I I really love that aspect of it, but it definitely is my new locker room. Um, the wind has been quite a thing mm. out here this week at Augusta National. It's given a lot of guys some fits, yeah. especially at 12 yeah. when it's swirling above you. Again, you've experienced it. When you hit a shot there and you really don't know what the wind's doing, what is that 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 problem? Well, it, it, the problem is not is not consistent. You know, it, it, you know, one minute is is moving left to right, the next one is right to left, is into you, is downwind, and that's why you see so many guys miss it. It's only a 155 yard shot, um, and you know, it's been it's been cool to kind of see some of the shots guys hit in there, like knocking it down or flighting it in a different ways. But it's a nerve wracking shot, and even when you're here playing it, when no spectators are around, like like the the hair on your arm just standing up with the suspense. Have you gotten to know some of the guys that are playing? in the Masters? Who are some of your friends out there? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I live in Arizona, and there's a bunch of guys that are members at my course there at Whisper Rock. So I spend a lot of time with the players, you know, Max Homa, John Rahm, Tony Finau, like you name it, you know, I get a chance to play with them. Then I play in a few pro -ams. So I, I really enjoy kind of being able to, to walk and talk with them. You know, as a guy who is trying to get better and improve their game, you know, any, any suggestions or hints that you can get from is always helpful. What's the best piece of advice that one of them has given you that has made your game better? Well, just like eliminating one side of the golf course. Right now, like I'm struggling with a two-way miss. And so like being consistent, like you see Victor Hovland or John Rahm or Wyndham Clark and even Tiger Woods this week, they just play this power cut, right? They can aim down the left side and they know it's never going to go left. That is a very reassuring way to play the game, knowing that you can only miss it one way. And so trying to trying to do things like that are, are what I you know ask often about. I can't imagine doing anything as well as those guys do it. I was just at Whisper Rock about a month ago to interview John. Thanks for the call. About sorry bro. Hey next time next time I'm hitting you up for sure. And to chat with him about what his experience was winning the Masters and what walking up the eighteenth with his caddy Adam Hayes and directly into history really feels like. You've been around a lot of history in your in your career and you're definitely gonna be a first ballot Hall of Famer when you get to that place. What is that emotion within you as an athlete when you are at the absolute pinnacle of what you do? 
Well, I mean, you, you see it. You see the, the peer adulation. I mean, you saw it with Peter Malnari a, a couple of weeks ago when he, when he won, and he was giving that interview, and, like, you could feel it, you know, through every fiber of his body, how much it meant after nine years, you know, trying to get back to that place, being able to have a, five, a you know, three-year exemption, uh, two-year exemption, and be able to play in all the majors again, and, like, how much it meant to him. And, you know, I don't know if, you know, team sports can really replicate that because there's been a lot of games where I've played great and, and we've lost. There's been a lot of games I've played poorly and we've won, you know, but you have to be at your very best and you got to hope that the other guys are not at their very best who are actually really better than you for the most part, you know, so there's so many things have to align and I think that's what makes it so interesting watching these storylines and you could really see it come out um, in the way they're able to talk about their experiences out there. All right, not who you think will win. Who do you want to win uh -huh. the 88th Master? You got to pick a buddy. I'm putting uh, you on the spot to pick a friend. Oh um, man, that's that's so t that's so tough. I know so many of these guys. You know, I I think for anybody who would mean the most would be Rory. You know, for him to be able to complete the Grand Slam, he hasn't won a you know hasn't won a major in in, uh, in ten years now, but he's played great golf. You know, he's won multiple times in different places, and I think it would mean a lot to the game of golf. You know, he's been a guy who's been trying to unify the game over the last few months. For him to be able to to win and be able to you know, talk to the world about how the game needs to come together. I think, you know, him winning would probably do the most for the game. I sat down with him at the Arnold Palmer a month ago or, or whatever that time increment is. And he told me that for several years when his uh, major record started to dip a bit, it's because he just wasn't putting as much emphasis on the majors as he did early in his career. Now the last two years, he's returned that emphasis and you see what's happened. I think he's finished in the top 10 in yeah. every single one of them except for missing the cut here one year ago. I, we see LeBron, for example, he does load management, yeah. maybe, maybe has learned how to conserve his body. As you make your way through a long season or even a, an event like this that requires so much emotionally, what's that, what's that education yeah. to get yourself to that place. Well, I think Rory is in a unique position because, you know, he cares so much about the DP Tour. I mean, that's where he yeah. came up. And so he travels a lot more internationally than most of the other guys that only play domestically. You know, he's he's going to play in Dubai. He's going to play in the Irish Open. He's going to play in a lot of events. So he's on the plane a lot more. You know, that's, that has to take something out of you, playing in different time zones. And so he's... He's sacrificing a lot more to be able to keep the strength of the DP Tour up and be visible and, and viable. Um, so, like, he puts a lot on himself. You know, you've seen his stance and how vocal he's been about the game. Um, so I think that definitely takes into account, like, the low management. You know, if he were not playing as much over there in Europe, he might play, you know, better. But, you know, I know he cares a lot about that tour and the success of the game in general. It certainly would be wonderful to see Rory McIlroy finally get the green jacket here at Augusta National. Larry Fitzgerald, thank, thank you, so brother. Much. I love I'm your Arizona, spirit. Man. ESPN's Laura Rutledge is a great friend and a wonderful, talented colleague. Her versatility always impresses me, and that has certainly been the case this week at Augusta. Laura Rutledge is the host of NFL Live on ESPN. She is the host of SEC Nation on the SEC Network. And she is the host of Welcome to the Masters on all ESPN platforms. And she's my friend. That's I'm the so, best thing. <laughs> I'm so grateful to have you here on the Masters podcast, my friend. This is awesome. <laughs> you know what I just realized as you were laying those things out? You work a lot. Maybe, but I work a lot with you, which yeah, is, which is what makes together. it really special. You are on all of those shows with me, which is so cool. So when somebody comes to Augusta National for the first time, there's a tremendous buildup of the expectation of what you're going to experience. And it always exceeds that expectation, but yours is especially unique because you didn't come as a patron. You came with immense pressure to host a show on a substantial platform with a lot of expectation, not just from our bosses, certainly from the viewership, but also from the club. So how is your – now that Welcome to the Masters is complete after two days, as we sit here on Friday afternoon, where's your head? How do you feel? <laughs> um, I feel really grateful to be here. I really do. And And – you know me well enough to know that I sort of invent all these things that are going to go wrong and that I'm doing wrong and that and I'm not living up to what it should be and that 
Um, you know, I don't deserve to be somewhere like that. That's sort of how I usually feel. And I'm trying to stop that because that's not kind to myself. Um, so I think what's been really cool about this is just the way that people, whether it's been our coworkers, whether it's been you, whether it's been Jeff Darlington, who's been on the show with us, have rallied around me and lifted me up throughout these last few weeks and months in the preparation and the lead up. And then you know, to be here and to to be able to look around and say, you know what, these people are so nice and they are so warm and so welcoming. And you are right that Augusta National and the Masters in general exceeds expectations. I had the highest of expectations. My whole life I've been wanting to come here growing up in Georgia. And it's somehow better than anything I could have ever dreamt. And so um, I'm just trying to cherish it and and really be thankful and live in that moment of gratitude. Um, you've done a tremendous job and you should be really proud and, and you should walk out of here on Sunday evening with a lot of self gratification that the preparation paid off the way that it did, because there's a lot of things going on when you're hosting that show and some things that maybe you weren't accustomed to experiencing in the past. <laughs> and so well I'm, said. you've just done a very good job and you should be very Thank proud you. of yourself. My goodness. Thank you. So have you. Well, your storytelling I is what makes it. that show as we all know. I got and so many good scoreboard. stories. I know that was really my favorite thing about you when you do those things is that you actually tell people how you're feeling, because I think sometimes we put up this facade of like, Oh no, I'm, I'm the cool TV person that's no. with them. And and you're just like, y'all, I'm in the scoreboard. <laughs> so, all right, <laughs> a little amazing. inside baseball for those of you on the podcast. I did not see the piece that I did when I went up in the seventh, 17th scoreboard. Yeah. Uh, I still haven't seen it, in fact, as we I said I saw here. it. It was great. So I don't <laughs> know if the part that I'm about to share is in the piece. I'm pretty sure it oh. isn't. <laughs> And I did not mention it live on television because I didn't want to get in trouble. I'm sitting up there with these gentlemen. It was about 10 guys. And they've been up there together forever. And there's this generational experience. And they have this beautiful cadence with which they speak. It's, it's almost like a football play. A score changes, and a guy down at the end says, new score. And they all go into, go into action. And they're grabbing the the numbers. If it was a birdie, they're grabbing a red number. If it was a bogey, they're grabbing a green number. It's just this whole thing. And on the backs of the the leaderboard, um, the inside of the leaderboard is green. It's this this older iron structure, and they use chalk to write the name of the player on the back of the door. And I just love all of that detail. Well, in the middle of learning all of this, they go, Marty, grab a red two. Ooh. So I run over and grab a red two. Somebody's two and under. And they're like, Hovland, 10, red two. And I'm looking at them, and I'm going, <laughs> what the hell does that even mean? <laughs> I, they had me put the number Wow. During tournament play in the scoreboard, when Victor Hovland had, I think he actually um, parred this hole. He, yeah. So, so I take the two, I slide it in the slot, and I am terrified Are you shaking? to death. <laughs> I shut this thing up and I'm shaking. You're like, that's this upside over, down. <laughs> I look over at these guys and they're all like, yeah, they were so fired up. And so, what an amazing moment so cool. to be able to do that. I, I can't believe that those opportunities that are at our disposal at ESPN. Um, I'm glad you nailed that. What if you had put it in upside down or something? I would have dropped it. Oh, my goodness. Bad moment to have Butterfingers. And it was windy. I know. And there <laughs> it was, was windy. And it's just a lot going on up there. It was so fascinating for me to learn how they do what they yeah. do. Uh, you went to the merchandise store. You did Ooh, a nice did. piece on that. Yeah. What was the total tally, and where are you on the laundry list of what you must get for your friends, your husband, your youngins? Well, okay, so the best thing was that when I told 
Josh, my husband, the total tally, which was like 1800 which is really a lot. And we were like, goodness gracious, we're going to have to save up I mean, with that. But It's relatively a lot. Here's my thing. The reason why it was a lot is because I had six bags of things. You can go in that golf shop and get so much yes. for the price. Like, it is really reasonably priced. It's for anybody who wants to go in there. I didn't realize that. And I, I went in and I was like, oh, my goodness, I could get everything. But, but okay, but the funny thing was, so I called Josh and I was like, hey, <laughs> I just went in the golf shop. And... But most of it's for you. And he was like, that's awesome. The best thing, too, as you know, is they ship. So we did that piece. I want to say we did that piece on Monday. And by the opening round on Thursday, so the first round of play, it had already arrived. It arri- the box arrived Wednesday to our house in Connecticut. So baby Jack and Josh got to put on their master's oh, polos fun. and watch everything in the first round with their new gear. And it was just so cool. I mean, he was sending me pictures of them. He said he went around. He was he was working that day, but he had the, the coverage loaded up. And he went around, and anybody that he came in contact with was like, oh, cool, man. You, you got a <laughs> master's polo. And he's like, yeah, my wife got it shipped to me. So it's just so cool. And I got to tell you, I mean, so I went the one time. I'm going to have to go back again. Like, there are more people. In fact, Marcus Spears, our colleague, he reached out. He said, Boogie. He calls me Boogie. He goes, Boogie, could you get me a 4XL, one of those, how how do you say it, one of them green (laughs) Masters polos? And I said, I got you, Swag. So I got to go in there and get him a 4XL. Have you seen a 4XL in there? I have not. I bet they have it. They have everything. Um, It's the best. You're one of the rare people who have the opportunity to – really attend the biggest sporting events and the biggest stages. You do the Super Bowl every year with your your NFL side of the business. You're at the national championship every year in the college football world. But this one, there's a different energy. How do you describe the Masters experience from, from the fan perspective? Because yeah. you kind of have that here. I am definitely a fan. I mean that Me that's, too. that I'm really never is. Lose that. No, and we shouldn't, right? Um, so I was thinking about this this morning as I was getting ready to come over for Welcome to the Masters, and I was thinking, you know, I've been in my hotel room before. I've gone to do an NFL. Let's say this year we did the divisional round of the playoffs for the first time on ESPN. Millions upon millions. How many millions watch that? 20-something million. I'd have to look back a a lot, right? Bunch of Lots of millions, which I try not to think about. I don't know about you. I try not to think about that when I'm about to be doing it. But I don't think about that ever, do you? Ooh, yeah. I try not to because it'll get me. I'll start feeling like, ooh, I'm scared. Um, Finish. I don't want to. Well, okay. So so what I thought was, you know, I'm down there in the chaos, and you've been in those moments when the teams are running out, and you got to run, get an interview, and everything's crazy, and it's loud, and it's just nutty, and you can find your sense of calm in that, right? But this is an arena all to itself. Yes, ma'am. And it's quiet, and you're almost left alone with your own thoughts yes, and your ma'am. own insecurities and your own feelings of, okay, hopefully I'm enough, and it's not anything that this place does. This place welcomes you with open arms. It, it's that we want to respect it so much and that we revere it for what it is and the history and the tradition and how special it is. And I I think that's what was hitting me today is like, wow, you know, <laughs> you've been on all these like really stressful stages, <laughs> but somehow in a way of respect. And I always say, if I don't get the jitters or like a little bit nervous before I do this job, I don't deserve to do it because somebody else who would care more, you know, should be in this role. So um, I think the way to boil it down is this, I just care more about this, you know, and, and and that's been very real for me these last few days. It's so funny to me that you're talking about um, thinking about who's behind the camera, like yeah. all those millions of people. <laughs> I was down at the 16th today and yeah. I couldn't hear you. I, I know. Hear a word you were saying. Sorry. And um, just so you guys understand, like my I couldn't communi- hear you either. <laughs> my communications. I, I have I have this thing with a big antenna sticking out of it. It looks cool on you, though. Uh, you're giving me a lot of grace. <laughs> a lot of grace, Laura Rutledge. The cans. It's uh, it's an unfortunate look, but I'm down there. I can't communicate with you yeah. really well, and so so just so you guys know, when that happens, 
I basically asked my camera guy to just do this when right. it's time for me to talk. And I'm moving left and right and up and down, trying to make the communications work. It's <laughs> Maybe not if working. I go over here. And all the patrons are standing there staring at me oh, because no. I'm, I'm amongst them. And I looked at this nice lady, and she's like <laughs> laughing at me. I said, ma'am, have you ever been somewhere where your cell phone was in a hole and you move around like this and you're yeah. just trying to find the right spot for the cell phone to work? She said, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. I said, imagine that, but with the entire globe watching. Yeah, that's what's happening right now. That's exactly what's happening right now. Um, oh, that's funny. Um, you've been watching a lot of golf, too, and mm. called a little bit of golf during yeah. Welcome to the Masters. Bryson DeChambeau is someone that has, in my estimation, I think we're seeing a very unique maturation from this guy. Yeah. He has... Speaking the reverence you spoke of a moment ago for Augusta National, I'm seeing that from him this week as a player, but there's also this there's this drive to win this golf tournament, I think, for him that I haven't seen in the way that we've seen it in the past. A couple of years ago, we came here, and his entire goal was to dominate the course with his length. And in fact, he said some things that upset some people about yeah. his length off the tee and how he could attack it a way no one else could. But the way he's making his way around these first couple of days is extremely impressive. As you've watched on TV calling some of his shots, what do you see? So it's funny that you mentioned the reverence because we heard from him – after his first round and he kept saying you know the respect that i have for this course and and how challenging it can be and how you may think you've got it figured out and then something comes your way and there's obviously the wind as a factor i think we're seeing a different version of him and an evolution that really might play well here consistently now here's the reality scotty scheffler is above everybody else right um and I say that because despite what everybody looks like right this second and despite the leaderboard right now, I just think Scotty's consistently proven in the last three years that he's a step above. But Bryson always has that skill set, and it's right there. And it seems like he's in a different headspace oh, completely to agree. potentially do this. And it would be really special, especially after missing the cut the last couple of years and, um, to your point, kind of getting overconfident in some ways. I enjoy him. Um, he's yeah. someone I very much enjoy talking to. He's extremely personable um, um, athlete, and I've had a lot of great conversations with him, and I think it's really nice to see that he's taking this approach this week, mm. and obviously it's paying off on a very difficult day Thursday. He has a career-best round here. Yeah. Uh, today, even worse. I mean, today kicked some dudes. It's so tails. windy. I mean, you see some of the – even these shots where the wind's whipping in their shirts, and yep. you can see we saw some shots of the bunkers and the sand just blowing like crazy, and it's gusting. It was funny. We talked to Ricky Fowler off the top of our show today, and he was practicing his putting. He had a tough day putting yesterday, and he was like, this wind can just downright embarrass you and make you look stupid because you think you're doing something – even if you're factoring in the wind, and all of a sudden, I mean, it really will gust your ball somewhere completely different, and it affects putting. It affects every single part of the game. And it, uh, I actually reported this with you on Thursday yeah. at Welcome to the Masters. Sam Burns letting us know that you don't know what direction it's going sometimes mm. because if you're over near the pine trees, you don't feel it. Right. So you don't know where it's coming from or where it's going and how it's going to impact your shot. So it really is quite a challenge it makes for these what, guys. What Bryson's doing, I think, really impressive. And and Scotty too. And, and it's Tiger been fun to see Max Homa. Woods Tiger. Yeah. made the cut for the twenty fourth consecutive time. That's a record here in the Masters tournament. Um, what a remarkable story. You're the, one of the best storytellers I know. When you talk about someone who rewrote the record book, who was the standard by which the entire sport was measured for 15 or 20 years, who got hurt and had to completely rebuild his body multiple times, who came back and won in 2019. It's a movie that you can't make up. I mean, it's if you wrote it, people wouldn't believe it. It's been really special, I think, to watch him out here these last couple of days because of all the things that you just brought up and, and his, his journey, but also how special Augusta is to him. 
And you see that in the way that it looks like to me he's willing his body to go forward. It's so remarkable. We're never going to see anything like this again because even if somebody somehow finds a way to be as dominant for even a smaller stretch of time, they wouldn't have the redemption story that Tiger has. And it, I think that's what has so many people grabbing onto him. It's why the crowds follow him everywhere. And he's just electric. There's a different energy. There's a different air about when he's around. Um, you know, it's funny because I'd heard about that, right? But I, I've never experienced that. And to see that real time, to just have the hair stand up on your arms, I'll tell just a quick story. I had never walked this course before. And so the first day that I got here um, – was Monday. Well, Monday was the first day I came over and we were going around, just, just wanted to see the course. And we walk up to the practice area. Right as we walk up, Tiger Woods practicing putting and Will Zalatoris is next to him. And our producer, Tom Ingle, looked at me and he said, welcome to the Masters. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness. I mean, it takes your breath away, you know, to see him. And so, so I just... It's amazing that we're seeing this happen, I think, in our lifetime. And um, I think the stories that we all tell about Tiger mean something to us. I'll let you run on this story. It's story time with Marty. I love it. <laughs> we need a fire, fireside so chat. So in 2019, <laughs> you used the word redemption, and it's the perfect word. When he won, I was standing at the 18th green, and I had a notepad. I didn't have my phone, so I told our boss, Mike McQuaid, I'm going to go to the 18th, and I'm going to write what I see. And afterwards, I'll go to the nearest camera and, when you come to me, I'll talk about it. So I'm feverishly writing all of these details that, you know, Charlie ran into Tiger's arms. I feel like I'm in 1997 when Tiger ran into Earl's arms. Yeah. He's hugging Sam. He's hugging his mom. He walks through the gallery and makes his way through this unbelievable sea of humanity to sign his card and all of the Former champions are there in their jackets to congratulate him. And all of the young stars of the game today are there because he's the reason they play the game. Brooks Kepka, Tony Finau, Justin Thomas, Xander Shoffley, you name it. They all play because they love him. And they were all there to congratulate him. And as I'm writing all of this, I get tugged on my jacket sleeve. And I look over, and it's a gentleman, and he says, Marty, I need a minute. And I'm like, yeah, man, how, how are you doing? You know, I'm, and I'm like writing my notes. And he said, Marty, I need a second. I said, how are you doing? What's your name? And he introduces himself. He said, we're Clemson University campus ministers. And I said, oh, I love it there. He goes, yeah, you're the, we know you're there a lot. He goes, I want you to know we see ourselves in Tiger's victory. And I said, how? He said, we're all capable of large mistakes in this life, but we're also all afforded the opportunity at redemption. And I looked at that guy and said, you have no idea how easy you just made my day. That was it. I ran to the camera on the first fairway and told the world that story. And yeah. it's just been, that's it. That's, that's his, encapsulates his story for me. But thank you for sharing your thank time you. with me and being such a great friend and colleague and making me feel like I'm really terrible at TV a lot. Oh, stop. She You're makes it look really easy. No, you are incredible. And thank you for welcoming me here so beautifully. It's been and, awesome. And for Please Now Driving, <laughs> Laura Rutledge. I love sharing that story about Tiger. That moment moved me deeply, and I'll carry it with me all my days. Three-time Super Bowl champion Troy Aikman knows well what it's like to perform under the brightest lights. I thoroughly enjoyed his perspective on the unique energy at the Masters. Troy Aikman is an icon. I'm, uh, I'm sure you like that well, title. Yeah, well, not quite, but... Three-time Super Bowl champion, Pro Football Hall of Famer, and the voice of Monday Night Football on ESPN. All right, you know the grandest stage, and you know all the distraction that comes with it. For golfers that are getting ready to play in the Masters here, what is the process for the player at the player level when you have family, extra media, sponsors in some guys' cases, to make sure that you compartmentalize the job. Yeah, no, I, I think in a lot of ways that's that's the challenge. I think for for a lot of these players, like the NFL and the Super Bowl, that 
I'm sure these families, they travel with their husbands and watch them play, but now you come to a tournament like this and you've got an extended group that's coming, much like the Super Bowl, and trying to compartmentalize that and get it all handled, make sure they're taken care of and, and still get yourself ready to go play. I mean, that's, that's not easy to do. The, the, that's about the only mental aspect I can appreciate when it comes to golf, because on, it's far man. different than anything that I experienced. You know, in football, everything's reactionary that, you know, you get the snap and, and then you react to things that are happening. Whereas, you know, you have time to think about the pressures of the shot and, uh, and what all that might mean uh, in the outcome of the, of the game. And so uh, it's, it, to me, golf is a real mental challenge and to be able to do it at this level is really impressive. There is certainly though, one unequivocal parallel between the quarterback position specifically and what these guys are doing in the Masters and that's you gotta flush the last one, yeah. no matter yeah. what. What's that challenge? Yeah, I think that the guys who are able to play at a high level in the NFL, they're certainly able to do that. And I think the, the guys who are able to go through the ranks and get to even be able to play in this tournament, they've obviously got the capacity to be able to do that. Because uh, I, I think, you know, when you, when you hit the pinnacle of your sport professionally, uh, you've mastered a lot of the, the intricacies that are important to being successful. And, so these guys are able to do that, you know, and if they're not able to on any given moment, then, uh, you know, their game's going to suffer from that. In an overall <laughs> prestige sense, how does the Super Bowl compare to the Masters? You know, you've done NASCAR and what Daytona 500 means, and they compare it to the Super Bowl. The Masters is a lot like that and other, uh, other events and other sports. But the way that this is run, uh, I've had the good fortune of being able to come here to the, the Masters a number of times, and I've been able to fortunately play the course. and. It's just the experience that you feel like you're going back to a different time uh, with the, the grounds and how well kept they are and how the patrons are treated uh, on the property. And it's, it's unlike really any other sporting event that, that I've been a part of. And I commend those that continue to keep the tradition alive and well. It's an awesome experience. For those who haven't had the blessing of playing here at Augusta National, yeah. define that experience. Uh, it, it, pretty amazing. Uh, I, I didn't play well whenever I have played here, but you just, you know, for those that haven't had an opportunity to, to come here to Augusta and be a part of this tournament, if they ever do get the opportunity, I encourage them to do it because Watching it on television, as special as that is, uh, it, it pales in comparison to what you actually see when you come. And you hear on the broadcast throughout the week that uh, it's all about once you get onto the greens and the undulation, and, and it's so true that television qu doesn't quite pick all that up. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing experience to, to be able to come out here and actually play and, and play a historic course that uh, where so many legends have been made and so many great moments have been had. Everybody has their favorite Masters moment. What Masters moment do you cherish the oh, most personally? Oh, yeah, you know what? It's such a great question. I've never been asked that. Um, Phil Mickelson was a personal favorite for mine, of mine, so when he won his first green jacket, uh, that's a Masters that, that I'll never forget as well. Who's the best NFL golfer you know? Uh, probably... Probably Tony Romo. He's good. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty good, and and John Elway was really good, and uh, you know most quarterbacks are really good players. I, I'm the exception, so <laughs> uh, I don't know. Most why that quarterbacks is. don't have three rings well, and, and a gold I'll, jacket. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. Last thing, uh, there's a difference between who you think's going to win and who you want to win personally. At least I think you're yeah. a Texas guy, yeah. so it may be the same answer. Who do you want to win? I, I'd, I'd like, well, I'd like to see Scotty Scheffler or Jordan Spieth, uh, one of those two. And I pull, they're, they're right, they're Dallas bred and born and raised. And uh, th those are the guys that I pull for. I, but with that said, it's a little bit like when I watch the NFL. I, I pull for all these quarterbacks to play well. And, you know, I know how much it means when you're able to, to win something like this. So whoever does end up holding up the trophy, I'll be really proud for them. But yeah, pulling for Scheffler and Speed. So grateful for your perspective. Thank brother. you, Marty. You're the best you. in the business at what you do. Thank you. Troy Aikman. Thank you so much for spending your time with us. You can also catch our show on masters.com and the Masters app, where you can also see every single shot on every single hole at the 88th Masters Tournament. We're grateful to bring the stories that make the Masters the best sporting event in the world to you every day. I'm your host, Marty Smith, and this is For Please Now Driving.
Good night.